Your research has been released detailing the impact of space travel on the human body. Scientists studied the health of an all-civilian crew on board a SpaceX voyage, as well as astronauts who spent 180 days a year on the International Space Station. Joining us live is Australia's astronomer at large, Fred Watson. Fred, always good to see you. Thanks for your time. Tell us, what health <laughs> impacts are there from space travel? What have we learned? Um, in fact, what we've learned is that the health impacts, at least the long-term ones, are fewer than we thought they were. Um, it seems that if you send astronauts into space, yes, they will, uh, they will certainly change. Their bodies will change due to the microgravity uh, environment and the radiation that we find in space. But you find that 95% of those deleterious effects uh, come good within three months. Um, and so it is an extraordinary study that's been carried out by scientists from 100 institutions throughout the world. Uh, and has, as you said, it actually takes the four space tourists from the Inspiration4 mission uh, back in 2021. Uh, one of those uh, four people was a doctor uh, who was able to conduct uh, live experiments on her, on her fellow uh, astronauts to check what was happening to their bodies as they spent their three days in space. It's not very long, but their bodies definitely changed during that time. Yeah, right. Good to know, though, that they, they bounce back pretty quickly. Uh, last month, Fred, we were all in awe of those beautiful auroras that were sighted. It was pretty fascinating to learn that those light displays also impacted Mars. Yes, that's right. It's an extraordinary set of measurements that have come from one of the rovers uh, that is on the surface of Mars, Curiosity, a NASA rover, uh, and an orbiting spacecraft called Marvin. Uh, Curiosity has sent back images uh, from the surface of Mars, which show, first of all, a dust storm going on at the time, but also lots of sparkles in the images, which actually come from the subatomic particles that are reaching Mars from the sun. Uh, and they are evidence that the subatomic particles were reaching the surface of Mars. They're interacting with the detector that is on uh, Curiosity's uh, mast camera. Uh, but also from orbit, uh, aurorae were seen, the northern and southern lights, except on Mars, they're not on, in the north or the south particularly. They are all over the planet's surface. They're very feeble compared with what we see uh, here on Earth. Uh, and the reason why they're all over the place on Mars rather than just north and south as they are here on Earth is because Mars has a very weak magnetic field. Its magnetism is much, much less than the Earth, and it's actually the Earth's magnetic fields that funnels those particles down through the atmosphere near the northern and southern poles to make those beautiful lights that we also uh, on TV and, uh, and, and on social media uh, a month or so ago. Yeah, it's just remarkable the sort of insights and, and data that we're able to see now from these faraway places, isn't it? We've also seen evidence recently for a collision of asteroids orbiting a nearby star. Fred, what actually happens when asteroids collide? Take us through it. <laughs> yeah, you've got to watch out for asteroids, Ash. They're, they're always tricky things. And this is um, remarkable science actually done by scientists at uh, Johns Hopkins University uh, in Baltimore in the USA. Uh, what they've done is they've taken some information that was uh, uh, that came from a, a star whose name is Beta Pictoris. Uh, it's a star that has a disk of dusty material around it, which we know is where planets are forming. And they looked at data that were obtained back in 2005 and found evidence there uh, in a particular part of this dis uh, dusty disk. Uh, they found evidence of uh, a signal due to dust. They, they, they found these basically these little spikes in the spectrum, that rainbow of colours uh, with the barcode of information. They found those little spikes that said there was a dust cloud around this star. But then fast forward 20 years when the James Webb telescope observes this same region and that evidence of dust is gone. And so the interpretation of this is that what was dust there was a temporary phenomenon, almost certainly caused by colliding asteroids, much bigger actually than the one that wiped out the dinosaurs here on Earth. Big asteroids colliding, creating clouds of dust, which are eventually blown away by the star itself, Beta Pictoris, uh, bringing to an end that little evidence of a collision of asteroids that probably took place about 20 years ago.